Uh, hey everyone, Sam here, and uh, we have another client interview for you today, this time with Bradley. Uh, I'm super excited to have you guys here from Bradley today because Bradley's an absolute rock star. He uh, completely killed it during recruiting despite uh, being a bioengineering major and uh, not really starting his preparation in earnest until uh, I guess the second half of sophomore year. Uh, it's kind of how we met. But, uh, Anyway, I think uh, he got selected for interviews with, uh, you know, I'll let him speak to this himself, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he got selected for interviews with almost every single bank that he applied for. Uh, he ended up getting um, pretty much like almost every single Super Day, if I'm not mistaken, and like every single offer that he went to Super Day for. So definitely want to get him on here to share with you guys how he was able to have so much success and so... Bradley, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, and uh, congratulations on all the success. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, before we start, um, can you just kind of tell everyone a bit about yourself and your background when we first started working together? I believe it was um, December of your sophomore year, um, but can you tell us kind of, you know, what school do you go to? What do you major in? Uh, what kind of experiences did you have on your resume at the time? And just like, what kind of candidate were you on paper in general? Yeah, I, um, so it, it's pretty funny because I've noticed a, a big change. I remember back in, it was probably October or November of this year, I was interviewing for sophomore summer positions at places like City, at places like UBS. You know, and at that time, I, pretty much had all science experience. Again, I'm a bioengineering major, um, go to a target school, but at the same time, it was pretty much all science, a little bit of entrepreneurship, but nothing really that deeply related to business or that deeply related to finance. And, you know, on top of that, just thinking, you know, holistically how good of a candidate I was, I, I realized in retrospect that my behavioral answers were atrocious. Um, like what I, what I said to my city interviewer, um, uh, is, is almost comical for like, uh, like, why do you want to work at city or, you know, like what is city? like my understanding was just so poor. And then on top of that, I remember I had my friend, uh, cause I knew absolutely nothing about finance. I, um, I had my friend in investment clubs sit me down and explain like basic finance concepts to me like he pulls up some dcf excel model and i'm like trying to learn it through the night and it was just like a complete disaster i could tell that my interviewer was uh not exactly uh vibing with me so yeah it's just kind of how i was at that point was uh maybe for lack of a better word you know i think maybe a decent like candidate but in other respects it's almost like god awful so it was pretty funny yeah yeah okay so so really like you you went to a target school or you go to a target school an ivy league school right um yeah. you're a bioengineering major uh you originally want to become like a phd scientist or something like that right and right. everything you had done up to that point had mostly mostly been geared towards scientific research and not towards finance right? Exactly. Um, and then I think when you first came to me, uh, you had already decided to switch over to finance. And I think at the time you had applied to what the UBS sophomore summer internship, but you didn't hear back from them. Right. Right. Um, and then you applied for the city sophomore leadership program. And I think you actually got the interview for that. But like you said, you just, uh, you didn't, you didn't end up getting it because your interview skills weren't, weren't there. Right. Exactly. Um, and then what else? You, I think you had done, I think I asked you about, you know, kind of your networking efforts at the time. And I think you had described it as uh, that you had done quite a bit of networking, right? Uh, right? You remember, can you talk a little bit about kind of like what you had done up to that point? Yeah, it's actually funny because I remember we thought it was around 20. I double checked. I'd probably only called like, 10 to 15 people mm. and they weren't the most fruitful calls. I had no idea like, like how to network. Um, you know, I just thought it was like a casual chat um, that really had like no structure. And, you know, a after doing the program, I definitely know like a lot more about networking and I've certainly um, 
you know, been able to network with a lot more than just 10 to 15 people, which really isn't going to get you anywhere in the long scheme of things. Right. No, yeah. Back then, I think you told me 20 to 30, but I guess it's actually 10 to 15. <laughs> yeah. When, when I, I thought it was 20 to 30 at that time, but I actually looked back and I think it was like 15 or something. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's pretty normal. I talk to a lot of students a lot and, uh, you know, like pretty much every week I'm talking to new students and a lot of times they'll say they'll be in that 20 to 30 range and they'll be pretty proud of how much effort they've already put into networking. Uh, so yeah, I've talked to a lot of people already and I'm always kind of chuckling like, oh, you have no idea. you know? <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, but okay. So that was kind of like where you were when we first started. Um, Let's give everyone a little bit of a spoiler first, but uh, can you tell everyone kind of all the banks you've received offers from at this point? And so you're currently in the summer between your sophomore and junior year, right? Just so exactly. everybody recording this. So you're in the summer between your sophomore and junior year, but uh, how, we're, it's what, July right now? Okay, so what offers have you received so far? Yeah, so a lot of processes haven't even kicked off yet, but uh, yeah, I've been super lucky. I've gotten uh, Prella Weinberg, uh, I've gotten City, I've gotten Evercore, and now I'm uh, doing two Goldman Sachs interviews, so both San Francisco and New York, um, and I've attended um, sort of insight programs for both of those, so you know, I feel pretty confident that I could hopefully get that along with like interview prep and all that, so yeah, I've been very, very fortunate. Yeah, and the Goldman Sachs interviews they have coming up, just to be clear about that, those are Super Days, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I even went straight to Super Day for, for San Francisco. Yeah, as in, like, they didn't even ask you to do the higher views because you went to the Inside Day, and they liked you so much from the Inside Day that they fast-tracked the Super Day. Yes, and I even got a call from a, from, from a Goldman banker saying that that was going to happen and, um, you know, they really liked me as a candidate. Right, right. You're talking about the associate that uh, called you after Inside Day and talked to you for what, like an hour, two hours? Yeah, it was for an hour. And yeah, I mean, she really expressed like, you know, she thought I was a really good candidate and, you know, that I was a good fit here. And we kind of just chit chatted a bunch of, about a bunch of things and hit it off. But um you know, it also kind of came with, uh, with the program, like knowing how to network, knowing how to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, converse with sort of professionals while also kind of, you know, being a, being a likable personality. Right. Right. Well, that's amazing, man. I mean, you've already gotten three offers. We're in July, probably a fourth offer on the way with Goldman if, you know, everything as we expect. Um, and that's, those are basically all the super, like every single super day you've gone to so far, you've gotten an offer from, right? Am I, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. For every investment bank that I've interviewed with, um, yeah, I've gotten the super day and then the offer. Yep. And, and every single application, that, is that like every single application you've submitted so far, you've gotten a super day for, assuming they've had a super day, obviously, like some of the processes there, they haven't they haven't gone that far yet but all the ones that have had super day so far you've pretty much gotten one right yes i have okay so in other words your batting average right now is basically a thousand like you're you have a perfect track record just so we're clear right that is true yeah i haven't thought of it that way but okay um, yeah that's, that's a pretty cool way to think about it no, i just want to i just want to pause there and call that out because um that is freaking phenomenal, right? Like that is just for everyone that's listening, that is not normal. Um, most people who recruit for banking uh, do not get every single interview and every single offer. Um, I mean, God, God knows it's hard enough to just get even one offer, right? Like I always tell people, all you need is one offer. So uh, obviously if you can get multiple offers, then you know, you get to choose from the best offer, right? And I think, I mean, having choices like Perella and City and Evercore, I mean, Evercore, that's pretty much as good as it gets, you know, in terms of elite boutiques. Um, and then now Goldman Sachs. I mean, I think you have a, you're going to have a really tough decision on your hands, but it's a great problem to have. 
definitely yeah it's actually a little stressful to uh decide between these banks but um yeah i definitely rather have it that way than the other way around yeah yeah well i mean look man you can't go wrong uh, no matter which way you go but um so let's talk about uh kind of let's let's go back to the beginning right uh like let, let's let's show people kind of how you got these amazing results or how you got to where you are today so uh, it's only been about seven months since since kind of we we met and started working together. So, um, first things first, I guess. Why did you decide to switch from you know PhD scientist track to investment banking? Like those things seem so different. What was it that attracted you to banking in the first place? Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, my my freshman summer I worked in kind of like an academic research lab. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I had actually kind of gotten a taste of what the real thing is and what actually working at like, uh, you know, like a professional research lab looked like, I've realized that it wasn't quite all that I had kind of, you know, made it out to be. Mm -hmm. I kind of had this grandiose vision of like, um, you know, being able to make this like huge impact on the world. And, you know, you kind of have independence over all your work and you're kind of just exploring what you want to do. But in reality, you know, life was, you know, professors just writing grants all day, not actually really in on the action, right. you know, um, mostly just being in a, in a quiet lab, like doing physical motion the whole time. If you're not the professor, like it was almost like manual labor, right? Like mm-hmm. you aren't actually putting input into the project. You're just kind of like doing experiments all day Mm -hmm. and I realized that just coupled with the job market which is like absolutely horrible for professors Mm -hmm. um you know coupled with just the salary to be honest um which is also like really low um for kind of the level of the work they're doing you know I knew that I needed to make a shift and so you know just thinking kind of through all my options I thought you know law school you know med school again because I'm a biology major was a big consideration but you know, ultimately, I, I, I wound up at investment banking, and I think it's for a lot of reasons. Like, I mean, first of all, it's no surprise that, like, you know, banking can lead to a lot of things. And I think being able to have a lot of exit opportunities, mm. um, whether that be to actually, you know, stay on as an associate or go to private equity or go to, like, venture capital growth equity or, you know, corporate strategy, um, you know, and the list goes on and on. Right. That was sort of a flexibility that I really needed because I was shifting my interests at that point and I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Right. And then I think second of all, um, just like the salary, right? I mean, right. It, it's pretty crazy to me because, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't grow up in the richest family. So, you know, what I, what, what I could make at the summer internship at Evercore is, uh, is, is close to what my family made in one year. And, you know, And that's just like the starting salary. That's like the summer analyst, which is kind of like the bottom of the bottom. And then if you're like an associate or a VP, you're making much, much more. So I think that ability to, you know, just plainly be able to make money is important. And then I think finally, like, you know, again, uh, you know, I was comparing research and I was thinking, you know, what impact is this work having? Like, you know, a lot of basic research doesn't actually lead to discoveries. Like, you know, maybe a sliver of it actually informs something in the market, but, you know, most of it's just kind of lost in history, like lost in some journal. Whereas, you know, like in banking, um, like you're actually doing like multi-million, maybe even like billion dollar transactions that could Mm -hmm. transform like a business, if not an industry. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that just seemed like way more impact to me than kind of turning away at something that, you know, probably won't even make it. Yeah. Um, Yep. Yep. No, that makes sense. Okay. So, so basically, I mean, it's a lot of different things, but it's, it's all things you talked about. It's, it's the exit opportunities, the flexibility, the compensation, the impact. It's kind of like the best of all worlds combined into one job, essentially. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I don't think a lot of people at colleges really even know what investment banking is on a deeper level, mm-hmm. you know? Um, you know, they just think like, oh, you're just like bored all day, like, you know, doing some finance thing. But, but in reality, like, it's like, it's an incredibly important career. Like you have a lot on your shoulders. Um, you know, you're working with like huge clients and and you're making a lot of money again. Um, 
so yeah I think, I think it was kind of the best of both worlds and and doing it at, a, at an extremely young age right i mean right who knows what most 21 year olds are doing when they graduate but uh, what I do know is the average college grad in the United States in 2018 is making around $50,000, right? And so you think about that versus what you're going to be doing in banking. Um, there's a reason why they're paying you, you know, two and a half to three times what your friends are making is because they're giving you a lot more responsibilities, right? And and they want to hire they, the, the things that they're um, assigning to you in terms of your responsibilities like they they need the best of the best like they need like the smartest people to be working on that uh when it comes to you know fortune 100 fortune 500 ceos and cfos um they can't just put some average 21 year old in front of them and have have those have those people advising them on uh some of the biggest transactions they're going to work on in their careers right so uh, so yeah that's that's it's an amazing opportunity um so let's talk about kind of um, when you first came to me, you know, obviously like I'm not the first thing that you tried in terms of, you know, helping you get into banking, right? So like what other resources had you been using prior to um, coming to Wall Street Mastermind? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's almost the thing is kind of the lack of resources that I was using or at least the lack of like good resources. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, behaviorals, I thought, you know, oh, like behaviorals, you can just think of them off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Like there's really, you know, it's just talking about yourself, like how hard could it be? Mm -hmm. um, and then for technicals, I honestly, at that point, I think I was having like my friend walk me through some basic concepts, um, maybe looked at like a couple of guides on the internet, nothing serious. And then networking, you know, I just thought it was like something that you naturally did. It wasn't like something that you have a structure. So, mm -hmm. you know, really, um, I guess on that front, you know, I guess I had resources, but obviously nowhere like near what this program's been. Mm -hmm. And then for like resume, my resume was actually pretty decent um, uh, because of like the Dartmouth Center for Professional Development, but they kind of nevertheless like miss some key things that I think should be on a finance resume. Mm -hmm. um, even though like the formatting and the, and the verbiage was, was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. So if we break that down one by one for your resume and application material type of stuff, you went to the school career center, right. And just kind of use their resume services, right. right. Uh, for your, uh, technical interviews, you use, what were the interview guys that you were using? Was it the wall street Oasis one or the breaking the wall street or what'd you use? Yeah, I think maybe I was using Wall Street Oasis at that point. But again, I just had so little knowledge that at that point, you know, I barely knew what like an income statement was. So, right. you know, I think Wall Street Oasis, but okay. not even really using that. Yeah. Okay. So you were using some guys and just having your friends or upperclassmen or whatever in your extracurricular organizations kind of teach you things, right? Right. Uh, and then on the behaviors, you're just like most, most college students I talked to, basically your mentality was, oh, it's just talking about yourself. That's pretty easy. I don't even need prep for that, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, networking, kind of the same thing. It's just like, you know, I'm doing it. You just kind of go through the motions, like not much to prep there either, right? That was kind of, so that was kind of where you were at, basically. Exactly. Okay. So I guess... Um, where do you feel, where do you feel like these things kind of fell short for you or like, you know, why, why did you even decide to reach out to me in the first place? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, at first going into sort of sophomore fall, I just had no idea how investment banking recruiting worked. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that sort of preparation was sufficient. Um, but you know, when I started getting my actual results and I noticed, you know, you know, city interview went terribly um, mm. when UBS didn't even respond. And, um, you know, just generally when I started like not being able to really get, you know, looks mm. or those looks were just, you know, <laughs> bad looks. Like I just failed the interview or, yeah. you know, didn't network at all or, you know, just kind of burning like applications. Yeah. Um, you know, I realized it was time to, to make a change. And, you know, because I had had a lot of success in science research before this. Um, 
and considering this is kind of like a brand new chapter, you know, I just didn't want to like transition from something I knew that I was good at and then just totally fail at it because then there'd be really no reason to, to switch over in the first place. Mm. Got it. Okay. And I would say that's very interesting that I mentioned that. I think uh, subconsciously too, maybe even without knowing this, but given your scientific background, you, your mentality is, hey, if, I'm try, if I try something like, and it doesn't work, then it's time to try a different approach or a different hypothesis or test a different variable. Uh, because if you just keep doing the same things, you're going to get the same results. Right. And so you, you didn't wait very long. You kind of like didn't see the results that you want to see with UBS and with city. And that was enough for you to kind of take action and try to figure out, okay, what else could I be doing differently? Exactly. Got it. No, that's, that's huge, man. Because a lot of students, I feel like, they kind of, they go about things the best way that they know how, and then it doesn't work most of the time because usually there's something that they're missing or sometimes there's multiple things that they're missing. But then people don't, for some reason, I don't know, I think we're like taught to be self-sufficient or it's weak to reach out for help or whatever. And then they just kind of keep doing what they're doing and it's kind of like banging your head against the wall. And I tell people, you know, it's the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results, right? So if you're not seeing the results that you want, then it's important to get the help that you need and figure out, like, what else could you be doing better, right? And a lot of the times, that type of improvement, you can't really identify yourself because it's a blind spot for you, right? Like if you can by yourself, then you would have already done the better thing in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's awesome uh, that, that you knew to do that. Um, so then let's, so then, okay. You, you then reached out to me, let's continue right down, down this journey of yours. So then you reached out to me, then we talked, um, we, I think you booked a strategy session, uh, I remember we, I think we talked for like three hours, if I'm not mistaken. I think you might still, <laughs> yeah, I think you're still the <laughs> longest strategy session that I've ever done today, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, do you remember why it was so long? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, say first 30, 40 minutes or whatever, it's just such chatting, you know, you explaining the program and then, you know, it kind of came to a point um, and I was just really uh, unsure Mm. uh like about the program like you know I, I really didn't know if like you were the you know the person to do it like I guess first of all like what qualifies you to say that like you know you know how to like properly recruit investment banking because at that point you know my friends um even ones with like decent offers were telling me it was like a completely random process and you know they had been rejected from 30 banks and then finally not one and you know it's just because it's a completely random thing that you can't prepare for Mm -hmm. So I had this mentality that, you know, oh, is there really a way that you can break this down? You know, kind of a, a formula, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that, that you can use for this. So I was skeptical about that. And then second of all, you know, I was just skeptical that you were like the person to do it, right? Not just that you could break it down, but like that you, you, you were like, you know, had the credentials to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why it took me like, two or three hours to decide, but I think, you know, in the end, again, like that desire to change, mm -hmm. um, like that desire to, 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 you know, be able to, to win at this was, was so much greater because there was so much more at stakes than, you know, just, yeah. uh, you know, a little program fee, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of times, um, you know, people, people are all for, Hey, getting someone who's been a banker and has been on the on-campus recruiting team at Morgan Stanley and whatever, like in terms of credentials, like if someone like that offers to help them with recruiting, they're like, yeah, of course I want that. It's all great. But then um, obviously like I run this as a business and uh, when it comes time to, when it's kind of like push comes to shove and it's time to like invest in themselves, then that's where they kind of start like fear kicks in and they're like, well, what if, I invest in this program and it doesn't work or what if I don't get the outcome that I'm looking for? What if this is a waste of money? And then you start thinking all these things that are kind of like telling you not to do it and you have to like 
really bet on yourself and take that leap of faith if if you want to kind of come over to the other side and and get all of that knowledge right and so that's kind of like a pivotal moment of a lot of people don't do it right a lot of people just like they can't get themselves to do it because um because investing in yourself sometimes is scary right and i don't know i don't know the psychology behind it but sometimes it's almost like oh what if i invest in myself and i still fail then then basically i'm a fool for making this investment right i think i think there's a little bit of that too it's just like people don't like being fools right um but you you ultimately even though it took a very very long time um kind of crossed that bridge of fear i guess so to speak and 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 ended up betting on yourself anyway right definitely got it so i mean like i'm really glad you did obviously because you too. Like, yeah, yeah. you've got <laughs> I, I, I got to be honest, like I will say the results that you've gotten um, have even exceeded my expectations. Like I knew, like, you know, back then when we were talking, I told you, I was like, hey, I'm very confident that based on our conversation, based on what you're telling me that, that you're struggling with and what it is that you need help with, I'm very confident that those are all things I can help you with. And I'm very confident I can get you a job in investment banking, but I certainly wasn't going to tell you like, Oh, I guarantee you're going to get every single super day you apply for every single offer you interview for just like, that's so rare. Right. So you, so you, so you absolutely crushed it. And that's a lot of the credit goes to you. Um, what do you feel like, uh, now that you've been through my program, like what was it that you found to be, the most helpful, I guess, out of everything we did together, or maybe it's multiple things. I don't know. But like what, what changed things for you? Like from, you know, in terms of what you were doing before to what you're doing now? Yeah, I was actually thinking about this a week ago. Like, uh, it was after it was was after one of those super days. And I was just like, I think I was sitting in like, the like the Dallas airport or or something. um, Mm -hmm. Because I was going back home briefly. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, wow, like this program actually like changed everything. And, you know, I was just thinking, I guess, what, what, what parts, I think, first of all, the behaviorals, um, like your help with the behaviorals is massive because people don't understand uh, about behaviorals. Again, everybody thinks that, you know, oh, it's talking about myself. I can just kind of spitball something or, you know, write a script the night before. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if, if you think about it, if like your technical finance knowledge is sort of like graded on a percentile basis, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then why isn't behaviorals? Mm-hmm. Like, why aren't behaviorals just as stringently graded? And why does not like every single word, like every single way that you phrase things matter? Mm-hmm. So I think that was the biggest thing. I mean, also the technical knowledge. Um, again, you know, I was maybe not confused where to look for something, but there's a difference between just memorizing lists of information and actually understanding it. Mm -hmm. And especially once you get to like really good, you know, firms like, you know, uh, a Lazard or, you know, a Molus or or an Evercore, you know, they aren't just going to ask you the most basic straight out of the book questions. They're going to twist it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think those questions twisted it more than they didn't. Like if I didn't kind of have the ability to understand it conceptually, there's absolutely no way I would have done well because, you know, the very first question is maybe something straight out of the book and then they start taking little turns on it. Mm-hmm. And then beyond that, like, I think maybe, you know, the third most helpful was, was and they were all very helpful to be honest, was, was networking. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, you know, people don't even understand like, you know, networking, I, I, people think, you know, oh, if I contact like 20 to 30 people, that's good. And no, the, the, you know, with, with your, you know, program, you're able to learn a lot more uh, of a systematic, a lot more of a logical way of doing it. Mm-hmm. And like, that was just super helpful. So yeah. honestly, all of it was helpful. Um, I, I guess if I had to pick one, the behaviorals. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, everything was good. Yeah. So, I mean, if we kind of drill down into what you said just now, one by one on the behavioral side, I mean, I like the thing you said about being great on a percentile basis. I feel like that's even more so the case for behaviorals and for technicals, right? Because for technicals, you either have the right answer or you don't, right? So it's kind of, it's almost kind of binary, right? Uh, But on the behaviorals, because it's so subjective and open-ended, 
your answers aren't being graded on a standalone basis. They're being graded on a relative basis relative to what everyone else is doing. Right. And so most of the time where I see people struggle is that, you know, they, they just write down the best answer that they could come up with and then they memorize it and then they go into these interviews and they hope that they get asked the questions that they actually prepared for. And then when they do, they get the answer that they memorize. But that's that's all like that's all great and all, but they're just doing that on a standalone basis. Right? Like they they are not understanding what is everyone else doing? What's their competition doing? Are their answers actually better than other people's answers? Right? Like they don't know that because most college students like you don't know what other people are doing for their answers. It's not like you've interviewed a bunch of candidates before, right? So how are you supposed to know? Right. And then even if you so that's a big part of like what I help you calibrate, right? Which is, are your answers actually better? And when they're not better, then the second step is kind of what you talked about, like, you know, the rewarding things, rephrasing things, restructuring your answers, cutting things down when you're going into the, too much into the weeds or expanding on certain things when there's not enough detail. But again, you, this is one of those things where you can't be the one doing yourself because your first draft is usually already your best draft right like it's just not it's not fair for someone to ask you to go figure out how to take your behavior answer from a five to a ten or from a seven to a ten because if you knew how to make it a ten you would have already done it right right so so i think that's that's a lot of the work that we do on the behavioral side on the technical side um, it's like you said, like just, again, what most people are doing is, I guess, you know, reading the Wall Street Oasis guide or the Breaking the Wall Street guide or Vault guide, or there's a bunch of guides out there that you can read, right? Rosenbaum textbook. Um, and, and then they just try to memorize all the formulas and memorize all the questions, like the 400 questions or whatever. Uh, and that's a very poor way to do it because like you said, when you get to these interviews, how many times do you think the interviewers actually asked you like the exact same questions as the ones you read in those guides? Probably like you know, quarter of the time. But again, it depends on the firm because you know some are going to take a twist right after that. Right, and, like they're going to change the numbers. They're going to change the way they ask the the same question or the same. They 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 can test for the same concept with like slightly different angle right or they a lot of times they're going to try to dress up the question a bit so, or disguise it a bit so that you don't it's not so obvious like what they're testing you on and unless you truly have internalized that knowledge and it's like you know, at the application level like application knowledge where you can apply these concepts in different life situations there's almost no way you're going to be able to get through an entire technical interview without tripping up. Right. Um, right. And so memorization that worked maybe like 10 years ago, you know, when, when uh, the competition wasn't so fierce, like back when I was in college, when we were like, that was good enough. Like nowadays, like there's so many resources out there already. Everybody has access to the same interview guys. Um, everybody's pretty much memorized the same things. That's not enough for the interviewers to be able to distinguish the good candidates from the bad candidates anymore. So essentially the bar has been raised, right? And so, especially like you said, with these elite boutiques like Evercore and Perella and Molis and, you know, the, the, the elite boutiques that are arguably even harder to get into than the bold brackets, they get really, really technical with their technical interviews, right? So I think, uh, I think it's pretty, it's pretty crazy that, you know, you, you got your technical knowledge from, I mean, I would say, well, when you started, it was probably at, well, on a scale of 10, probably at a one or a two, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I barrel, yeah, probably one or two. Yeah. To now you're at like a nine or a 10. I would say you're probably at a 10, right? So like, what was that interview you had where, uh, was it the Evercore interview where they were drilling you on technicals and then what happened? Like, what did the interviewer say to you? Oh, he said, um, so he basically asked something that was 
some of them were just like incredibly obscure granular details of finance that were kind of like you know take the information take a leap to try to understand what this is yeah and then some were kind of just like almost like brain teasers that involved finance Mm. and yeah he basically he actually told me that like I was one of the few people who could who could solve those um and that there are actually a few different questions that he said were like really rare for people to be able to understand and like solve and and I got them all Mm -hmm. and so he like just he's I think what what he said was well you clearly know what you're doing and then he just kind of cut off the technical interview and you guys just kind of <laughs> for the rest of the interview right exactly yeah we kind of just started like chatting about like life and like sports and you know just a bunch of kind of like uh random stuff because yeah um he said like yeah you clearly know what you're doing so we can just end the technical interview yeah and it's like at that point i mean you haven't even left the interview yet but you pretty much have the offer in the bag you know what i'm saying it's like right it's just so obvious. And so that's, I mean, that's freaking, that's freaking amazing that, that you were able to do that. So major props for that. Um, and then the last part was like you said, the, the networking piece. So how many people would you say you kind of ended up networking with ultimately, like since joining the program? Cause I know, you know, when you first started, it was like 20 to or whatever, 10 to 15. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> thinking about it, you know, I, I have like my list and then I, and now I kind of realize like, I've just like informally been able to network with people like in my life. And so it's probably bigger than my list. So I'd say around 300 people. Um, you know, I come from a pretty like tight knit school, I would say. Um, so I think my success rate was high. And then, you know, I think I really like kind of was able to, you know, like master, like pitching myself and, you know, just being able to have like a nice chat with people and being able to have a nice call. And so yeah, 300. Um, but it, it really worked out because now I have a referral at like almost every like major bank or elite boutique. Right. Right. And that's really the key there is that obviously, you know, you go to an Ivy league school and you have a pretty good GPA, but there are a lot of other students who go to Ivy league schools and have the same GPA as you and arguably probably had, more finance experience than you because you're a bioengineering major, right? And so right. the fact that you got every single interview wasn't purely based on just how you were on paper, I don't think at least, right? Um, really the reason why you got every single interview is because of what you just said, which is you networked effectively and you networked efficiently because there's no way you could have networked with 300 people in, the, in that amount of time if you weren't doing it efficiently with kind of the systems and tools and processes that we kind of gave you. Right. But Definitely. then, but then you, you, more importantly, you, you had the networking skills to convert those networking opportunities into actual referrals. Right. Like I always thought everyone's like, Hey, the goal is to, for every single bank that you're applying to, you want to have at least one or two people there who are, really really strong connections that you know will be willing to refer you for an interview and that's the only way to guarantee that you're going to get an interview um, amongst all these super qualified candidates and that's pretty much exactly what you did right exactly yeah that's amazing man so thank you that's uh that's awesome um so i guess you know, we already mentioned earlier, we already kind of spoiled the results, but obviously now you have multiple offers, right? Elite Boutiques, Bulge Brackets, Barella, City, Evercore, Goldman Sachs are coming up. Um, you got invited to the uh, Insight Day. They reached out to you, told you're a priority candidate, talked to you for an hour. So phenomenal outcome, right? Uh, phenomenal conversion rate from applications to interviews. Uh, phenomenal conversion rate from interview to offers. Well, really like a hundred percent conversion. Um, <laughs> but like, I think maybe this is a silly question, but like, how do you feel about the investment you've made in the program at this point? Oh, well, it, it's actually funny because I'm thinking about something that, uh, that we talked about in our strategy call and actually something that probably like pushed, well, probably pushed me over the edge. It's just like, if you think about like the ROI that you can get on like, the stock market or like, I don't know, like 
even like investing in your education, like I think it's actually nowhere near like the ROI for this program. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Like if you think about it, like, you know, who who knows if I would have gotten an investment banking offer at all um, if I had stuck with my traditional means, you know, maybe I would have been able to, you know, piece together little bits and parts of behavioral and technical to kind of get a low tier bank. But, you know, the difference between like, say a low tier bank and, you know, now what I guess I'm deciding between, which is like an Evercore or or Goldman or, or places like that. Like Mm -hmm. the difference in those is huge. And the difference in the exit ops that you could get from those is huge. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, So really, I mean, the ROI is like, you know, somewhere crazy. Uh, And, and yeah, like way greater than, you know, what you're going to take if you, if you take that same money and like buy some like index funds or some like, stupid cryptocurrency coin or, or whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny yeah no i mean um i think you, you make a good point which is if we think about how much money people are already investing in their college education these days you know a lot of times especially you go into school like a like an ivy league school you're spending well into the six figures over four years right Exactly. Uh, it could be over two hundred thousand dollars a lot of the times when you talk about like oh, everything is said and done, and the whole point of for your parents to you know invest over two hundred thousand dollars, or in some cases you know if you even have even worse you had to take out student loans to do that. The whole point of doing that is to get the best job you could possibly get, right? That is an investment in and of itself, right? And so now it's like this is no different. You're making a very, very small incremental investment relative to what you're already investing in college, except what we're doing is what massively increasing the ROI on your education, right? Like if going back to what I said earlier, if the average college grad is making $50,000 when they graduate, but you're graduating into a job that's starting salaries, $150,000, that's three X right? Definitely. Um, and then it only goes up from there, right? But if your starting point is 3x, everybody understands how the law of compounding works, even if both you and the other person who's making $50,000 only increases your compensation at, let's just say, I don't know, three to 5% a year into whatever, the next 30 or 40 years that you'd be working. That's millions of dollars over the lifetime of your career, right? But we also know that, hey, starting in something like banking versus starting in like a regular $50,000 job, your, your compensation is not going to grow at the same rate. It's not realistic to even say you're both going to grow at three to 5%. Like it's, it's for you, for someone like you, who's going to an Evercore or Goldman Sachs, and then probably eventually to, you know, a mega fund on the buy side afterwards or whatever, KKR, Blackstone, TPG, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Your compensation is growing exponentially right uh um, you you by your 30 out of school you could be making three hundred thousand dollars if you end up at the right fund so yeah definitely and the um ROI, the roi is massive i mean you, you're gonna get the your roi is already massive even we're talking about full-time opportunities at this point even just from getting your summer internship you've already made your money back many many times over right definitely um are you uh, are you comfortable talking about how much Evercore is going to pay you, or if you take the offer? <laughs> I, oh. I actually, I, I actually can't disclose uh, the exact amount. It, it'd be confidential, but uh, it, it, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's above street, right? Let's just let's let's oh yeah, way big about it. It's above street, and also. Like in addition to just the pay itself being above street, I didn't even know they did this, but I think it's probably only because they really, really want you, um, given how good of a candidate you are. But they're also offering a scholarship on top of that, right? Right. Yeah. So that's that's freaking. I mean, look again. You just majorly crushed. It. Like I'm super happy for you, and just want to congratulate you again on all the success and. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll ask you is, you know, do you have any last minute tips or advice for the people who are still currently going through the recruiting process? Like how can they, what can they do to, you know, 
I don't, I don't want to say get the same outcome as you because I think for a lot of people that's like, again, you you are like almost an outlier. Like it's it's crazy what you've been able to accomplish. But what can they do to even just maybe get um, a similar outcome as you are? Like even if it's slightly worse, it's still a phenomenal outcome. Like what can they do? Like what should they be doing? Yeah, I mean, like I think really looking at the process is like a formula or a funnel. You know, all these people who told me, oh, it's random. And, you know, I don't know how my buddy, you know, got rejected. He's in like four investment clubs. He's so legit. Well, really, it doesn't. I mean, investment clubs help on your resume or whatever. But, you know, if if if, if, God, if life was a game of just uh, being in more investment clubs or, or whatever, right? Um, well, it'd be pretty easy to get an offer. And so... Like, it's much more of, like, a formula, much more of a funnel than people realize. And being able to fine-tune every single aspect, like, it is the way to go. But I think on your own, there's just no way that's going to happen, right? Again, like, if everybody thinks that their behaviorals are top-notch, well, then why are 99% of people getting rejected? Right. And that's because everybody's behaviorals are not top-notch. And, in fact, a lot of people's behaviorals suck. Right. <laughs> just be plain I've like interviewed friends and I'm just like you know after going through this program I'm like like how would you even say that (laughs) and so you know I think yeah just being able to fine-tune and you know not being able to take that leap um because again ROI is so big that if you think about it if you are going to you know an an Ivy League school um or if you're going to any sort of expensive school or really anything in general like this is going to be you know, a, a sliver of money compared to what you're going to spend on yourself in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows, this might equate to like, um, like all the designer clothes you buy in a year or whatever, or some stupid stuff that's not actually going to like contribute to your life. Mm-hmm. Right. And actually like make more money for you. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just like not being able to like be afraid to like have a coach, like have a real mentor who like can walk you through the process step by step. And then third of all, you know, it's, you know, this program's a great way to like get you the tools that you need, get you the resources that you need. But at the end of the day, you have to like work hard. I mean, it's not just gonna, it's not just gonna fall in your lap. I, you know, winter, winter uh, of my, of my sophomore year and kind of the second semester. Um, like this is basically what I did. Like I tried to take easier classes and just chip away, like really hard at recruiting. Um, which of course, you know, required a lot of personal effort, but I think was made, you know, 10 X easier just by having all your resources, all your tools and, and your advice. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, I think you make a great point, which is the analogy I'll make is, you know, you, you use that funnel example and, you know, you got to optimize that entire funnel you know, from get uh, your application materials to your networking to getting the interview to acing the interview, um, you can't diagnose your own funnel, right? It's it's kind of like, hey, if something's if you're feeling sick, if something's wrong with your body, you're not gonna diagnose it yourself. You're gonna go see a doctor, right? You go see someone who right. knows how to fix these things. And recruiting is no different, right? Um, and I would argue it's much more. Uh, important and longer uh, has a uh, more everlasting impact than you know some cold that you get and you might even go see a doctor if you get a cold but it's like for something like a career why would you try to fix that yourself right so um look like there you have it guys like i think you know the biggest takeaway you can kind of have from this conversation is that hey if you're already a smart and qualified candidate which i'm sure a lot of you guys are um, you know, maybe you go to a great school, maybe you go to a non private school, it doesn't really matter. You may, you maybe even have a great GPA, um, you know, but maybe you don't have a whole lot of experience, whatever the case may be, right? Um, we can, we can help you get some amazingly phenomenal outcomes. That, I mean, the bottom line is whatever outcome you think you may be able to get for yourself, let's put it this way, whatever outcome that is, we could probably get you something that's 10 times better right? Then if you were to just do it on your own. So why settle? Why settle for, you know, good enough or maybe not good enough. Maybe you can't even get an offer on your own, but why settle? Like for something as important as your career, uh, for something that you've been working so hard towards all your life, right? Like the whole point of you going to school and getting good grades and getting a good college, like everything you've done up to this point has been working towards this one end goal of 
having a great career. So why not get all the help you can get at this point um, and take your best shot at it, right? And so you, you likely have, all of you have a lot of potential inside of you, right? That's just waiting to be tapped. But sometimes it's difficult to bring that out on your own, right? Just like Bradley tried to do it by himself originally, but I mean, he clearly has a ton of potential. Like look at where he is now, right? But he wasn't able to bring that out on his own. But, you know, if you can get the help you need, you have an expert help you take what you've already got and just refine it and bring it out and present it the right way, you can completely obliterate your com competition, right? And you can, you can get the best offers out there, right? Like the Evercores and the Goldman Sachs of the world, right? And sometimes you're going to be scared of making a bet on your, you're going to be scared of just making a bet on yourself, right? But if you invest in yourself, the rewards can be tremendous, right? If you won't invest in yourself, then nobody else will invest in you either, right? And then what ends up happening is you just sit, stay on the path that you're currently on, which is most likely not living up to your fullest potential, right? So if you're in a similar boat as where Bradley was seven months ago and you're ready to make a big change and just completely transform yourself as a candidate, then I want you to go and schedule a strategy session with me right now, okay? So you can do so by going to uh, my website or actually go to www. Uh, wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. Okay. Um, the street in that URL is abbreviated to ST. So it's really wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And uh, on this strategy session, basically we'll discuss where you're currently at, what you're struggling with, you know, where are you trying to go? And I will give you my honest assessment of whether that's possible and what it's going to take to get there. Right. And sometimes, believe it or not, I tell a lot of people, if it's not possible, like, and then it's not in your best interest to pursue this. I will tell you that as well, right? Because it's not always, um, investment banking is not always the right thing for everybody. So, uh, but you know, you don't, we, we don't know that until, you know, we've actually assessed your situation. So that's what, what, what I'm going to help you with. Right. So, um, no matter what, I'm going to give you advice on kind of the next best steps for you to achieve your goals. Okay. So, uh, the strategy session is free. Um, there are no obligations, so make sure you go and book one. And uh, before you hop, obviously, Bradley, again, I just want to <clears throat> thank you for coming on here today and kind of sharing your experiences with everyone on here. You are an absolute rock star. You've got an amazing outcome. Um, I would say, you know, good luck on the Goldman Sachs interview that's coming up. I don't think you really need it. So thank you. Um, but yeah, man, like so, uh, so glad that I, you know, was able to work with you and help you on this process. And I'm uh, excited to see all the big things you do uh, going forward. Definitely. Yeah. I'm excited to uh, finally put like ink to page and scan that offer letter in and finally just be done with it. And, you know, like feel secure, like just know that like you've done it and you're going to work at one of these places. It's going to be great. Absolutely, man. Well, Congrats again. Thanks for coming on. And for the rest of you guys that are listening, um, thanks for listening today. And uh, I hope to talk to you guys soon. All right. All right, Bradley. I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.